Volkov is somewhat unsatisfied at the moment. Whilst the preparation for the Blood Harvest Ball is progressing well, it seems one or two members of the Vampire Council are a little less enthusiastic about the endeavour. It seems Boris has decided to sow the seeds of dissent among some of the more senior vampires, proving Volkov's belief that his former friend is working against him. Therefore, Volkov has decided to take the guidance of one of his younger council members, and has approached Tarvek, a somewhat eager and obedient vampire who is willing to prove himself entirely. He enters the room and addresses Volkov in a strange, snake-like voice. You wish to see me, my lord. Are you in need of my services? Indeed, Tarvek. It seems Boris has somewhat betrayed me and is currently working towards undermining me in regard to the Blood Harvest Ball. He appears to have turned some of the senior vampires against me. And you need someone to return them to the fold. Is that your requirement? I would send in Jericho. However, I feel this should not be dealt with a heavy hand. I need someone with a level of influence. Someone who can persuade them to return their loyalty to me. I am honoured that you require my skill. I assume that there will be several individuals I will need to converse with. Karak, Aranax, and Strak. They are the three you will need to deal with. Remember that each one of them has specific desires. Play into that, and they will return their loyalty to me instantly. If not, remind them what happened to Harker. That feels like such a long time ago. To think he and Boris worked together to bring the first victims of the Blood Harvest before the slaves had become ready. It feels so long ago. It's a pity that Harker decided to turn against me. You know, of course, he is the only vampire to be part of the Blood Harvest, literally. I never truly understood that, my lord. Considering we don't have blood flowing through our veins. What did you drain him of as his punishment? His vampiric essence. There is a special reservoir underneath the palace for such energy. Any vampire who betrays me in any way or form shall be fed to this reservoir. And upon a day of the Blood Harvest Ball, a selected number of vampires will be granted access to this gathered essence. Of course, as host, I gain first access. That goes without saying, my lord. It would be ill-mannered of any vampire to place themselves before you and your majestic energy. I would cease with the boot-licking, Tarvek. It's very unbecoming of you. Just promise me that you will speak with Karak, Aranax, and Strak. Remind them who it is they really answer towards. If they refuse and continue to rebel against me, remind them of the palace reservoir. It shall be done, my lord. I shall return with good news and loyal subjects once again. 
see to it that you do. I grow tired of this situation. If we do not make sure we have it under control again, we could lose everything we have built over the centuries. Boris must not succeed in undermining my leadership. Indeed, my lord. I shall attend to this matter immediately. Meanwhile, Maximus has returned to Garalos to rejoin the caravan. With it being still in its residency in the city, Maximus decides to do a little window shopping. His coin purse bulges with takings from the previous night's show. He knew it was a good idea to stop in the city of culture. At least they appreciate what he is bringing them, unlike some of the other venues they are yet to travel towards. He spies a rather small, shabby, but welcoming shop. Something about it seems familiar. He enters, and a face he has not seen for years greets him. It stops him in his tracks at first, as he thought this person long dead. Ah, oh, good morning, my friend, and welcome. Well, well, well. Look who we have in my humble little shop. If it isn't young Maximus. Octavius Petrovich. It's been a long time. Does your brother know you're alive and well? I very much doubt it. Not that I care about him. Last I heard you sent in some rather excitable rogues. I'm surprised he managed to get out with his life. He owes me over 100,000 krell. To be honest, I doubt he will pay up, which means every time we cross paths, your brother and I shall have quite the large amount of fun. <laughs> that I have no doubt about. If I cared about him, I'd pay his debt. I'm doing quite well on the black market smuggling trade. Unfortunately, I've had to swallow my pride and use the Shadow Court as my movers. However, they are quite unaware one of their best customers is in fact a vampire. You know something, Octavius? I think we can use that network to my advantage. Your advantage? How so? Because of the Blood Harvest Ball, that's how. I need a reliable service to deliver invitations, but as my father pointed out, we're unable to use conventional methods. Too many questions would be asked. However, if we can use the Shadow Court to do the legwork for us, it would save us time. Cost is no object. My father says we can pay handsomely to anyone who is willing to accept the task. But what if Corvus is aware of the Blood Harvest Ball? News of it spreading through our community like wildfire. Eventually it'll reach the ears of the vampire hunters who will no doubt do everything they can to put a stop to it. Well, between you and I, and this is only between you and I, Corvus already knows about the Blood Harvest as do the Vampire Hunters. However, we have a plan in place to ensure that the Hunter Agent is taken down with the help of the Assassin's Guild. It is our intention to sow the seeds of confusion and discontent amongst the Ordo Interitum to plunge it into a civil war. You've got it all worked out then. I guess Valkov knows more than he's letting on. And just who have you been talking to about Lord Volkov? Boris. He comes here every so often to purchase talismans and potions. Apparently he's working on one especially for Lord Volkov at the moment. Is he now? Very interesting indeed. Thank you for that snippet of information. Very useful to me. 
Have I said something wrong, Maximus? Not to me, no. In fact, you said something that will work to my advantage very well indeed. But it will cost another vampire dearly. Very dearly, in fact. I think this is going to make the Blood Harvest Ball quite interesting and a lot more entertaining. Oh good, for a moment I was worried. Now, nah, is there anything you'd like to purchase? I have a fine array of drinking goblets. What about that dagger on the wall there? Oh, what about this dagger indeed? It's a rare and expensive artifact. Said to have killed General Clark in the final days of the Civil War fought by the Tyrant King. Some believe this dagger belonged to the Tyrant King himself, in fact. Though there is no proof. Even if there is no proof, I'm interested. How much do you want for it? 25,000 krill is my price. A bargain, if I'm honest. I've had to drop the price because when people ask its history, they suddenly lose interest. I thought 50,000 krill was too much in the end. It wouldn't surprise me. Very well. Wrap it up and I'll take it with me right now. I have a place in my personal quarters back at the caravan where it will sit with honour. Here's the 25,000 you ask for. Right away, Maximus. I'm delighted I've finally been able to get rid of the wretched thing. Feel like it's been plaguing my shop since I acquired it. <laughs> I wonder why. Sorry, Maximus. Did you say something? <laughs> Just thinking out loud. Now, hurry up with that dagger. I'm eager to put it on display immediately. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way. Maximus steps outside and opens up the package to look at the dagger. He beckons over one of his personal caravan messages, who has been waiting outside. I want you to go to Necrotia and inform Lord Volkov that we finally have the dagger. We'll be able to carry out the ritual of the Blood Harvest Ball as he anticipated. It will make it all the sweeter when we have the Ordo Interitum agent as our prisoner. It is clear now that the dagger is significant to the vampires, but what is this ritual referred to by Maximus to his messenger? Why is it important it takes place during the Blood Harvest Ball? Will it even take place? Not even Maximus is certain, but it gives him peace of mind to know that if any other members of the Vampire Council have turned against his father, then the presence of the dagger will convince them otherwise. Even if Volkov has had to gain the assistance of another to persuade them, However, a few days later in the city of Trigon, Geoffrey and Garen have received word that the Blood Harvest Ball is taking place, and that one of their most prestigious customers is requiring special equipment to be created for a new agent. This is a bad business, but we're not the only ones in it. When I received word that the vampire hunters were needing equipment for a new recruit, I nearly fell out of my chair. I thought they had all their recruits. Plus I thought they had their own resources to arm and protect their members. They didn't want our help here in Trigon. It seems those falls in Ondar City do want our help now. They know about our specialised forging techniques. Well, what do they want specifically from us? How much are they willing to pay? Our services don't come for nothing. They want the lot, Garen. They want armour and weapons. It appears they're sending someone on a fool's errand, right into the epicentre of the beast. You don't mean... Yep. 
They're sending their agents into the heart of Necrotia itself. To be honest, they'd be better off wandering into a den of Dynafants on eight. Don't think I like the sound of that. Well, how do you think I feel? The agent is bound to get captured, and our armor and weapons fall into the hands of the vampires. You know what that means if that happens. Volkov can reverse engineer our work and create armor and weapons for his own army. Just think, an entire force of vampires clad in Trigon-type armor? No, I'm not standing for it. We've come too far for it to fall into enemy hands. Well, what are you going to do? I'm gonna cut corners. We send them any old piece of armor, a lick of paint to create the crest, and a few quick weapon forges. Who cares if they fall apart? They only have to take out at least one vampire. We ought to make it appear functional during the demonstration stage. These vampire hunters need to be shown who's supplying them, and why they shouldn't make such demands upon us. They, being a brand new faction, has made them arrogant, forceful. As a proud, strong traditionalist, I won't stand for such upstarts telling us our job. It is very much unlike you. Normally, you take such pride in our work. You said it yourself that Trigon is one of the finest creators of armor and weapons in the Ondarian monarchy. The only creators of armor and weapons in the Ondarian monarchy. However, as I've said, I'm not going to allow any damned vampire to take my work and use it for themselves. These vampire hunters ask too much of us, and I'm not going to stand for it. Damned be their agent. I see your point. We do pour our hearts and souls into what we create, after all. Look, perhaps we can compromise with them. Instead of sending them in cheap inferior armor, perhaps we can give them something a little more middle of the road? Ah, <laughs> Sorry, Garen. My man's made up. Our forges are overworked as it is at the moment. Mm, agreed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to visit the North Forge to discuss the special order from the Grand Mage Artem. Apparently, he needs some staves he can enchant for a special mission he's about to undertake with his apprentice. Very well. Report back to me when you're finished. I've some paperwork to finish up here, and then I'll be sending correspondence to the Monarch's Chamber Council. Very good. I'll speak with you later. Garen leaves the office with Geoffrey on his own. His demeanour changes, but so too does his appearance, and the truth reveals itself. Hmm. It seems Garen is much easier to manipulate than I first anticipated. Good. He will become a most useful stool pigeon for our scheme. The good news is Maximus has the dagger, and we are one step closer to our desired victory. The monarchy is doomed. Will Tarvek succeed in reuniting the Vampire Council? Will Volkov have greater problems on his hands? Just how significant is the dagger? And is it even genuine like Maximus has been told? Also, what has happened to the real Geoffrey of Trigon? A man usually so loyal to the monarchy that his alleged change of heart towards the vampire hunters should have told Garen to stand firm. It seems everything is going in the right direction for the vampires, and as the clock ticks down to the blood harvest ball, it seems time is also ticking downwards for the monarchy and its people.